Japan is building a train that doesn't touch the tracks and is designed to travel faster than a commercial jet. Powered by superconducting magnets, this maglev train reached a world record speed of 603 km per hour during tests. It's part of the $64 billion Chuo Shinkansen project, aiming to connect Tokyo and Nagoya in just 40 minutes, almost half the time it takes today. Over 90% of the 286-kilometer route runs through tunnels, including deep passages beneath the Japanese Alps. But despite its groundbreaking technology and national pride, the project has hit a massive wall. A short 9-kilometer stretch in the Shizuoka Prefecture has stalled the entire line, pushing the opening date from 2027 to 2034. How did one small section of track and one politician derail the world's fastest train? Japan has always been ahead in the race for high-speed rail. Back in 1964, the Tokaido Shinkansen changed everything. Just in time for the Tokyo Olympics, it slashed travel time between Tokyo and Osaka from 7 hours to just two and a half. That was a revolution. Cities connected like never before, businesses expanded, and a country rebuilding from war found new momentum in steel and speed. Fast forward to the 2000s and Japan had nearly 3,000 kilometers of Shinkansen lines, with trains hitting speeds of 320 kilometers per hour. But was that enough? Could they go even faster? That's when engineers turned to something truly futuristic, maglev. Short for magnetic levitation, maglev trains don't use wheels. Instead, they float. But how? It all comes down to superconducting magnets. The train's magnets repel the coils along the track, lifting the carriage into the air and propelling it forward at mind-blowing speeds. Japan's version, the SC Maglev, takes this to another level. Using electrodynamic suspension, it lifts off at 150 km per hour, then races forward, eventually topping 603 km per hour in tests. To make this a reality, Japan launched the Chuo Shinkansen project a high-speed rail line slicing through the Japanese Alps, with most of it running underground. The price tag? A staggering 9 trillion yen, or about $64 billion. If successful, it could revolutionize intercity travel forever. But there is a problem, a big one. Out of the entire 286-kilometer Tokyo-Nagoya route, only 9 kilometers pass through Shizuoka Prefecture. And yet, that tiny stretch has become the project's biggest roadblock. Why? Because of one man, Governor Heida Kawakatsu. Since 2014, Kawakatsu has refused to approve construction in his region. His reason? The Oi River. This river is life for Shizuoka. It supplies drinking water, powers hydroelectric plants, and sustains the region's prized tea industry, an industry responsible for 36% of Japan's tea production. The area produces over 25,000 tons of tea annually, making it the tea capital of the country. Kawakatsu argued that tunneling beneath the Southern Alps might reduce water flow. In response, JR Central, the company behind the project, promised to return every drop. They proposed complex systems, including building a water diversion tunnel and reinjection facilities to pump water back into the river during and after construction. Despite those efforts, Kawakatsu wasn't satisfied. In 2017, he halted progress entirely, citing JR Central's lack of sincerity. Even when the national government formed expert panels and issued reports, like the 2020 ministry-backed conclusion that the river flow could be maintained, Kawakatsu stood firm. His administration insisted the environmental risks weren't clearly resolved. The standoff deepened in 2023, when Shizuoka officials went so far as to block an underground water survey initiated by Yamanashi Prefecture claiming no study should proceed without full mutual agreement. To many, it began to seem less about science and more about politics. Critics suggested Shizuoka's real gripe was being the only prefecture along the line with no planned station. Some believed Kawakatsu used the environmental issue as leverage to push for a station near Shizuoka Airport, something JR Central opposed due to redundancy with nearby stations. Meanwhile, the delay was dragging the entire project down. Billions of yen had been spent, deadlines were crumbling, and Kawakatsu, he wasn't budging. For nearly a decade, this one man and his 9-kilometer stretch held back the world's fastest train. 
So what happened next? By 2023, the stalemate was no longer just a regional issue, it was national. In March, JR Central admitted the truth. The Tokyo-Nagoya section couldn't open in 2027. There were simply too many delays. That announcement was a major blow. For years, the 2027 opening date had been a key milestone. It represented the future of Japanese infrastructure, a future now slipping further away. And just when things couldn't get worse, Shizuoka's governor, Heida Kawakatsu, made a critical error. Speaking to a group of new employees, he praised them as highly intellectual while taking a jab at farmers, claiming they merely sell vegetables or raise cattle. That comment didn't sit well, especially in a region where agriculture is everything. The backlash was immediate. Within 24 hours, over 400 complaints flooded in via phone and email. Political pressure mounted as public outrage spread across Shizuoka. Local media, civic groups, and prefecture assembly members openly condemned the governor's remarks. Farmers, factory workers, and ordinary residents felt deeply insulted by the comparison. Kawakatsu attempted damage control, insisting all professions were valuable and apologizing publicly, but the damage was done. His comments triggered a wave of criticism he couldn't recover from. And just like that, Kawakatsu was out. His resignation was a pivotal moment. It wasn't the first time he'd made controversial remarks either. Back in 2021, he'd been recommended for resignation by the prefecture assembly after mocking another city in Shizuoka for only having rice. But his latest comment crossed the line, and it triggered a seismic shift in the Maglev project. By September 2024, with new leadership in place, the government finally gave the green light for boring surveys in Shizuoka. For the first time in a decade, there was progress. That shift in policy came with a new governor, Yasutomo Suzuki, widely seen as a maglev proponent. Backed by local industries and with strong support from Nagoya and national leaders, he moved fast to reopen dialogue with JR Central. The long stall tunnel surveys resumed. But the challenges didn't end there. In Aichi Prefecture, engineers encountered something unexpected. Soft ground near Nagoya. What was once a 2025 deadline for tunnel completion was pushed back another five years to 2030. This wasn't a minor issue. Tunnel excavation became slower and riskier. Only 70% of the work was done before construction paused for further geological studies and redesigns. And as if that wasn't enough, other parts of the route, stretching beneath mountains and deep underground, faced logistical hurdles of their own. And that ambitious goal of launching the Tokyo-Nagoya Maglev Line by 2027 gone. Now the target is 2034. But Japan isn't the only country chasing the future of high-speed travel. While Japan wrestles with river rights and tunnel complications, China is surging ahead. In Hunan province, engineers are laying the groundwork for a new intercity maglev line. Their mission? To take the lead in the next generation of ultra-fast transport. China already dominates the high-speed rail world. But if this project gains momentum, it could spark a whole new maglev race, one where Japan is no longer in first place. And if China pulls it off first, the balance of power and global transit innovation could shift overnight. Still, Japan isn't out of the race just yet. Until maglev becomes the norm, the Shinkansen remains the country's undisputed king of speed. And who knows, maybe by 2034, you'll finally get to ride the train that doesn't touch the tracks. But what do you think? Will Japan's maglev project maintain its lead, or is China on the verge of overtaking? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss our next video.